All right. So if you saw the thumbnail is, well, <laughs> fuck. Hold on. All right, you can roll. All right, if you saw the thumbnail, notice it said private uncut workout. So just a reminder, these aren't short little how-to videos. These are full length workouts. I've been doing YouTube since 2009. My days of doing little short curated content is done. So sharing my own personal workouts with you. And with that said, today is chest. So I've been following a 16 week program here that I put together for myself, just trying to get back in the groove. So we're eight weeks in. We started off with calisthenics, moved into bands and bands plus free weights. So now we're moving into a little bit more free weights. If you like using resistance bands, don't worry, you can still follow along. I'll give you some alternative movements that you can do. With that said, first thing you wanna do, if you have bands, we're gonna do a wraparound press. If you don't, you can even drop to the ground, do some push-ups. We just wanna start to really loosen everything up, get it nice and warm, chest, shoulders, triceps, a nice controlled wraparound press here. Just want to get a little blood flowing. Hopefully you've already done a warm up. Typically I like to do 10 minutes of a warm up, just some light cardio. Get in there. Once the shoulders are a little bit loosened up, I'll do some rotator cuff movements, internal rotation, external rotation, all that good stuff, especially on chest day. We use a lot of shoulders and think about one of the more common injuries is shoulders. So take the extra time, do the preventative work. And what we're doing here with this movement, I want you to try to mimic in a lot of your different presses that we do. I want you to think about Squeeze into the middle. Even if we're using a bar and you literally can't squeeze to the middle, I still want you to think about that. Pretend you are to get that really strong contraction. It's almost like if the bar was made out of aluminum and you were just crushing it between your hands. So with that said, we are gonna do some bar work. Now, I mentioned this in last week's workout. When we wanna, feel a very strong contraction here on the outside of the chest. That's coming from a little bit of a light stretch by bringing our elbows out wider. We have to be careful when we do this, be very disciplined with our technique so we don't cause any kind of injury. But we can mimic this same thing that we did with dumbbells, do the exact same thing with a bar, but we can also do it with bands. So if you wanna do this with resistance bands, just focus on keeping those elbows out wide and pushing straight up, almost as if you were using a bar. So that said, I'm gonna get right behind you and grab a bar, which, crazy enough, I haven't done any kind of bar work in a very, very long time, so I'm gonna take it easy today, not do anything crazy. As far as weight goes, we're still gonna to try to get a nice, intense workout here, relying on good technique, good time under tension, Good mind-muscle connection, really focusing on a squeeze with every rep. And that is way too low, so we're gonna have to adjust this. It looks like that might work. Before you load up the weights, I mean, if you're doing this in a gym, then obviously most bench presses, no, it's too low. Already set up. Now you can also do this same movement like we did last week and just do it with dumbbells. That's another option. Kind of doing bar work just because it's something different. Been so long since I've done any kind of bench press. Truthfully, I don't even know where to start. 
But here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on trying to get at least 15 reps, nice, low time under tension, so nice and controlled. So we don't need a lot of weight. I don't even know where all my plates are. That's how little I use them. So we'll use some bumper plates here. Now, when I first started training a long, long time ago, I used to do a ton of bar work. And I believed what everyone believes that when you start, which is bench press is the king of all chest building movements. And that's not necessarily true. It can be a great chest exercise, but it's not the king. And I will tell you why. Our chest helps bring our arm across our body. So with a bench press locked into that bar, you can only press straight out like this. So you see the movement of our arm across our body is very limited. Stops there. There's nothing all the way across. And so that's where, of course, isolation movements come in like dumbbell flies, cable flies, etc. So you can build a decent chest with bench press, but you're not going to build the most complete chest without incorporating other isolation exercises. So again, with this, whether you're using dumbbell, bar, bands, I want you to focus keeping those elbows out wide, get a nice stretch at the bottom, press straight up, but pretend to squeeze the middle. This is still a little low, but that's okay. See how this feels. So two count, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's six. Nice controlled rep tempo. It's going to make it a whole lot harder. You don't need a lot of weight when you do this. Plus getting that stretch at the bottom, less risk of injury. We don't want that nice smooth transition right here at the bottom. No bouncing, nothing jerky. Nice. So I'm actually gonna raise that up just a little bit. It's still a little too low. Now I hear a lot of people talking about only using full range of motion. Most of the time I like to train with full range of motion, but there's benefits to doing partials. Something easy you can incorporate, and this is a good exercise to do it with, because most of the benefit for your chest is gonna be down here at the stretch and the very beginning till about here. That full extension, that's mostly just triceps there at the end. So a lot of times I'll even do like, almost like a three quarter rep where I just feel nice, good, constant tension there in the chest the whole time. And it actually makes it a whole lot harder because we're not able to lock out. When we lock out, we can rest for a second. So stopping just short, constant tension, that in combination with the slower rep speed and that good mind-muscle connection of focusing on squeezing the muscle every rep makes a lighter weight feel a whole lot heavier, which is why I'm not even going up in weight, I'm gonna stay right here. Get a little light stretch in between. Oh. 
Okay. Trying to stick to about 90 second rest periods. If you're doing strength building routines, where that's your focus, strength, you'll have longer rest periods. You want to recover more fully between sets, but for more of a muscle building hypertrophy program, 90 seconds I found is a pretty good sweet spot. Here we go. Smooth transition and stop short. Like I said, that three quarter rep right there. Trust me, that's actually a whole lot harder. Actually felt pretty good. Like I said, stopping just short definitely bumps up the intensity in my opinion, which is counterintuitive. You would think more range of motion, one equals more time under tension, but that's not always true because that extra range of motion, like I said, allows you to rest at the top, which actually takes some of the tension off. So that's set two. That was first 15 reps. The first one, I think that was 15. To be honest with you, sometimes I really am not that great at counting them because I'm more focused on how I feel. Already heating up in here. I know everyone's different. I've always personally liked putting my pinky right on the line that's in the knurling there. I know some people like to go a little wider so they'll put their index finger. Find what's comfortable for you and where you get that nice stretch. I do like wide enough because if you start to go a little narrower, you start to use a lot more triceps and those elbows come in closer and you don't get that same kind of stretch at the bottom. So we need to be at least out here. Now, if you don't have a spotter, don't do anything stupid and try to get those extra reps that you can't get. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. So you use a little rest pause, rack it for a second, 
stretch it out. Let's see if we can get a couple more. There you go. Nice. I hear a lot of people tell me that they'll get really good workouts with bands, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that, but a really simple one is with bands, you're never worried about, you know, getting stuck underneath a bar by trying to force a couple extra reps. With bands, you can really just sit there and fight it and fight it and fight it until you really hit the wall. And again, with a bar, if you don't have that spotter there, you can only push it so far. All right, so that was flat bench. Fun, I haven't done that in a long time. Don't get me wrong, there's still always that part of me that, you know, just wants to lift heavy shit, stack the bar with a bunch of weight and just throw it around, but found that's not super productive for me. It may be fun, but the nagging shoulder or elbow issues are not fun. Let's get this bar out of our way. I can honestly tell you, it's been probably, man, at least a good solid year, if not longer, since I've grabbed this bar. Last time was when I was working out with my son. He was a 16 at the time. He's creeping up on 18, so it's been longer than a year. All right, good stuff. So the focus of that was out here, elbows nice and wide, getting that nice stretch. You really feel that on the outside of the chest, even across the upper portion of the chest, even though we're not on an incline. So now we're gonna do a flat dumbbell press, but we're gonna focus on getting that good squeeze right here in the middle. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're not gonna do dumbbells. I'm gonna do a cable machine. If you don't have a cable machine, but you have bands, no problem, you can do the same thing. I'm being kind of selfish here. I'm doing what I want to do. And that's the advantage of making these private uncut workouts. These are just my workouts that I happen to be sharing. So kind of taking you along for the ride. We're being a little spontaneous today. So I'm gonna put that about chest height. Let me get this anchoring strap out of the way that I use for the bands. This one is a uh, universal strap that's longer that you can put that around trees, fence posts, whatever. More, yep, yeah, one more. So this particular rack isn't my favorite for doing full range of motion flies, and it's because it's narrow. You can see it's not as wide as a normal crossover machine, cable crossover, which is going to be at least kind of like fingertip to fingertip, if not wider. So with these, you're not going to get that crazy stretch on the back, but that's okay because we just got that with our flat bench. What we want to focus on here is that second half of that range of motion, right? We got from here to here with bench. So we really want to focus on this portion, more here in the middle. Now with isolation movements like this, and they are an isolation movement because we're taking the elbow out of it, so we're taking the triceps out. That's what makes a compound movement a compound movement. Shoulder and elbow, so now it's just isolation. 
it's just at the shoulder. We don't need a ton of weight here. And I find that when I try to use too much weight, I start to lose that, that strong contraction, that nice feeling. So I would always have a tendency to err on the side of going a little bit lighter and then just, if I need to bump up the intensity, slowing down rep speed or, you know, just focus on that mind muscle connection and getting a stronger contraction. So I don't do my arms straight like this, like I used to a long time ago. I like to keep just a slight bend at the elbow and that actually makes it a little easier on some of that connective tissue up here in the shoulder. When your arm is straight like that, it's putting a lot of pressure even on your biceps tendon. So typically avoid that. So slight bend at the elbow, come forward to get a nice stretch. And I'm just gonna focus on here, pinky to pinky, just like this. Come back, I'm gonna stop short, keep constant tension. Squeeze, get that nice isometric there in the middle. Control that concentric, isometric, control the eccentric. And then chest out, chin up. Think big chest, as in sticking your chest out. And then really think about getting that strong contraction in the middle. Don't just rely on the resistance to create the contraction. Use your mind. Squeeze there in the middle. Make every rep as hard as you can. Ah. Ah. Nice. Cool thing about cable flies or doing band flies is you can adjust your angle. Remember those muscle fibers in the chest run in different directions. So we can even do more of a low position up to high. I feel that really nice in the upper chest. We can even come a little higher with our hands as our starting position. And we can squeeze down towards the middle. That has a different feel. So I don't like one over the other. I like the way each feels. Learn to do each one the right way until you really feel that strong contraction. Compare, contrast. And I don't think you're just gonna pick one. I think ultimately you'll do what I do, which is mix them up. Train the muscle from different angles. And you don't have to do it all in one workout. Maybe this week you're doing like we're doing here to the middle. Maybe next week, you know, bringing it down lower. But no matter how you do it, same basic thing, chest out, chin up, focus on those controlled reps and really focus on getting that squeeze in the middle. And for me, when I, Go pinky to pinky, I feel a better contraction in the chest. It helps me take some of the focus off my shoulders. If I come in here, even square like this, knuckle to knuckle. If I do it the wrong way, pretty soon I start to feel the anterior delt start to light up a little bit. All right. That resistance felt pretty good. Big chest, squeeze. We're gonna do a band finisher here at the end of this set. Uh, 
Two more. So at the beginning of this set, I was talking about keeping that bend in the elbow. So I have a lot of issues with the tendon for the long head of the biceps where it comes up into the labrum here. And I have a lot of friends that are my age that have the same issue. A lot of them even have had that tear on them. And then the biceps rolls up, not a good look, requires surgery. And after reflecting on it, I realized that all of us used to do the same stuff. We used to do these extreme range of motions with our flies, whether it was cable or dumbbells, same thing. And when we do that, that is putting a lot of stress on that tendon for the long head of the bicep. So especially the way it sits in this little pocket called the bicipital groove. If you look at uh, bones here, you can see that little groove right here. And so when we start bringing our arm back, that tendon that sits right in there has a tendency to rub on that and it causes a lot of tendonitis, a lot of issues. You do that over years and years and years, you can end up weakening the tendon, can lead to a rupture. So with that said, I don't keep my arms straight like I used to, slight bend, and I don't go crazy far back with these. I don't exaggerate that stretch, just a slight stretch. See how this feels. I'm gonna anchor the band under our feet. Anchor, or not anchor, but take your stance nice and wide. It's gonna help create this angle of pull here with the band. Make sure you have tension here at the bottom. And we're gonna, oh, that might even be a little too heavy. I'm gonna narrow my stance just a hair. I should go with a lighter band. Yeah. Here we go, squeezing up to the middle. Nice. Good stuff. Stretch it out. We got one more set of these. Mm. You can also stretch both arms or both sides of your chest, same time. They typically call this a doorway stretch. You would just literally come into a doorway. All right. Again, nice controlled concentric, isometric squeeze in the middle, controlled eccentric, smooth transition. <sighs> Everything is smooth and controlled, <sighs> but still as hard as you can. <sighs> I don't want you to sacrifice intensity as you're trying to perfect your form. You have to find that Happy balance. Let's 
Let's do that uh, band finisher again. Nice. Now, if you were on a cable machine, you just set it's all the way down to the bottom. And you do the same thing. All right. Good stuff. We're gonna do one more chest exercise. This happens to be probably my preferred exercise for upper chest. I've mentioned this before, but I've always had a challenge with incline presses not using too much anterior delt, the front of the shoulder. So for me, putting this on a 45 degree <coughs> incline doesn't work for me. Some people it does. You know, we're all a little bit different, built different. Some people just, you know, are able to kind of tune into a muscle group a little bit better. So for me, instead of doing my presses here, I like to take it down a notch. So a little flatter, so it's still on a slight incline. And then with my dumbbell presses, you can do the same thing with a bar. Instead of trying to squeeze here to the middle, I just get an okay contraction in my upper chest here. What I like to do is some partials. So I like a nice stretch, elbows out a little wider, keeping my forearms perpendicular to the floor the whole time and it's just a partial range of motion right here and this I feel in the upper chest I feel a really nice strong contraction if we don't need to go heavy with these again we got constant tension the whole time so it's almost like you find that pocket where the contraction is really strong and you just stay right there in the pocket Hmm. Let's just see how this feels. Again, you don't need to go heavy, and I don't want you to go heavy, especially taking our elbows out wide like that. That does increase the risk of injury if you get sloppy, especially if you start slinging the weight around, bouncing at the bottom. So nice stretch right out here. Feel that all the way across the chest and then just straight up right here. Stretch to the bottom, smooth transition, straight up. So it's almost like a half range of motion. The key is definitely that nice stretch at the bottom. Again, pressing straight up. I'm not coming in here. So, with our Pressing movements, it's not just chest, it's not just anterior delts, it's 
it's triceps as well. So by doing this, sticking down in this range of motion, you see there's very little movement at the elbow. So not really using much triceps, a little bit, not a lot. This is still a compound movement, but it does isolate the chest just a little bit more. And for me, helps me take some of the focus off the anterior delt as well. Ooh, get that stretch. Speaking of triceps, after we finish this, we'll move on to some triceps. I'll show you the one exercise that if I could only choose one triceps exercise, this would probably be it. The one that I feel hits all three heads of the muscle a little more equally. I can tell you one, I'm not gonna call it simple, but one very clear way to make your chest look bigger. Let's make this smaller. It's hard to, hard to look like you have a big chest when your belly sticks out further than your chest does. Okay. Here we go. Now, even though we're not squeezing to the middle, doesn't mean you don't want to try to visualize squeezing to the middle just so you get that nice, strong contraction. So we're gonna do one more set. At the end of this set, we're gonna kick our feet up on the bench here and do a decline push-up, which mimics doing an incline press. So we're gonna use a push-up as a bit of a chest finisher here. What we'll do is, as many as you can, nice controlled technique. It's not about quantity, it is about quality. So as many good, clean, controlled reps, good rep tempo. When you hit failure, you can't do another one. We'll sit up for a second, we'll shake it off just for a second and see if we can get a couple more. All right.
Definitely get that nice stretch at the bottom, smooth transition. But by controlling that rep speed, you're already controlling the speed of the descent right here. Makes it easier to make for a smooth transition at the bottom. Rack this. I'm gonna go right into those push ups. Nice wide hand position. And drop that chest way down. Catch our breath. Let's turn around and see if we can squeeze out a couple more reps. Good stuff. All right, let's put this bench away, get it out of our way. So we're gonna go to the cable machine. You can mimic this with bands as well. So we want to come above our head, not too high. Now, you can do these with a rope if you want. You could do them with a V-bar. I don't particularly like it with this exercise. If you have something like this, even better, this is what I prefer. So you see it's got handles in here, but use what you have. So I like doing a lot of overhead triceps extensions, puts nice tension on the long head of the triceps, which gives you a nice strong contraction. But this move, Seems to uh, give me a nice feel overall. Feels pretty balanced. So again, if I only hey, could pick one exercise, I think this would probably be it. So stepping forward, <clears throat> arms aren't overhead. See my elbow right here, this would be more like an overhead where your elbows are literally pointing above your head. So this is, just a little bit of extra tension there, but elbows are still in front of me. And then I'm pressing straight out. This is like a you know, pretty basic old school triceps exercise. Just happens to be one of my favorites. And when I see people do this, I see people cheating a whole lot less than when they're doing say a regular standing triceps push down where I see all sorts of weird, awkward techniques. With a regular push down, it's really tempting to try to go too heavy. And that's where the form starts to unravel.
Control that tempo. Nice, smooth, concentric. That isometric at the end. And control the eccentric. Oh, man. Just get a little light stretch in between. Nice. Good stuff. Getting close here. Two more sets. Depending on how we feel, maybe we'll do one last set push-ups. I like to just get that little extra, try to get that extra pump, drive some blood into the muscle. Plus it just makes you really feel like you gave it your all. That last little bit of energy. All right. By the way, we we're talking about cheating on triceps push downs. I see a lot of weird stuff in here where people cock their body to the side and, and then it kind of almost turns into this weird chest press looking thing. One little thing you can do, really challenge yourself. If you step out from this a little bit, when you squeeze here at the bottom, you have maximum tension as opposed to here, I can lock out. This is easy for me to rest here. Here, I have constant tension at the very end of this. It's almost like when you're doing a spider curl or even sometimes a preacher curl where you still have good resistance there at the peak of the contraction as opposed to doing a standing curl where I can lock out. So same exact concept. So try it. You're gonna have to go lighter than you normally do though because it's a lot harder. Take a couple steps back. You're gonna feel a major difference. But don't let it hurt your ego because you're not gonna be able to move the same weight. I also like to, at the very end, try to get that little rotation in the hands where it's almost like thumbs pointing to thumb. I just get a better squeeze that way. Ah. Ah. Mm. You notice when you do even stuff with a rope, as you get tired, what we'll have a tendency to do is we'll press hands together, almost knuckle to knuckle, and we feel much stronger here. But at the end, if you squeeze not only out, but like I said, turn those thumbs towards each other, get a really strong contraction, but you're gonna again have to drop the weight down just a little bit. Almost done. Feeling good here. I wasn't exactly psyched for this workout either, so. It's always a satisfying feeling. Coming in, getting it done. It's like that one box you can check and say, all right, I know no matter how the rest of the day goes, I at least did one thing that was productive. Ah, 
Yeah, one more. Ah, oh, man. Oh, those were burning. So you notice we're not coming in and doing three, you know, or even two exercises for triceps. Now, if this was a different split where I did, say, biceps and triceps, yes. Those are smaller muscle groups. I would come in and do probably three exercises for buys and three exercises for tries. But you got to remember, two of our chest exercises, we were already working tries. Bench press, his tries. When we came in here, did the incline dumbbell press. You're using tries there as well, even if we try to minimize them. The only thing we didn't really use much tries with is with our cables. So when you're doing triceps on chest day, you don't have to really sit there and pound the muscle with a bunch of different exercises. You can get your, or your variation from workout to workout, not trying to cram it all into one workout. Because if you try to do a chest workout with at least three exercises and triceps with three exercises, it's a long ass workout. And I've just found that it's overkill. It's not necessary. So that was three, right? Okay. Let's knock this out. Push-ups real quick. So a lot like our incline, or just like our incline, want to focus on quality, not quantity. Good range of motion. Make sure that chest touches the floor. Controlled rep speed. Mind-muscle connection. Pretending that you're squeezing those hands together. Strong contraction. Let's do as many as we can. Rest for a second. We'll do a few more. Shake it off. Again, when you're trying to really squeeze every rep, it makes them a whole lot harder. You're not gonna be able to do a lot of these. All right, a few more. There it is. So make sure you stretch this out. Stretch out the chest, stretch out the triceps. Not even a terrible idea to do some rotator cuff moves. You know, loosen up that shoulder. And that's a wrap for chest. So I will see you tomorrow. We're gonna knock out back and buys.